Hey everybody. So um, we're gonna look at some space, um, some space naming, some space bounding stuff, uh, and a question that I got in in the uh, office uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, they were having issues. So it was an MEP model. They brought in the architectural model. Uh, uh, one model was. Uh, developing the shell of the build, building and another one, the interiors of the building. And they, when they use the spaces button, so they came in here and they generated the spaces. And um, when they created the spaces, so, you know, they went into the um, uh, space, the space button they went in here and placed spaces automatically. And then when they did that, they went into, um, or not there, sorry, um, space naming. And then they automatically generated the, the space names. And um, they ran into some some issues with that. Uh, I'm going to go back into the manage dialog box and reload this real quick. But when they... Um, you know, name the spaces, they were um, noticing that it was just naming them all the same thing. Uh, so if I close this dialog box, we can kind of see that example. So um, we can see, you know, this, this space is called Facility 1, this is Facility 2, Facility 3, and Facility 4. Um, we have two models, so two architectural models. So one's called the Facility, one's called Interior. Um, they are both set to uh, bounding. So if we if we go right click the Revit link and then entire project or visible, it doesn't really matter uh, in this instance. But if we go to edit type, we can see that room bounding's on. Now I could turn it off in this view, but it's not going to do anything um, if I turn it off after the fact. Um, it's not going to fix the issue. So if I turn room bound bounding off in this facility uh, link, it's not going to fix the issue. Um, so, and to give you an idea of kind of what we're looking at, so this is the facility uh, um, Revit model. If I click on that, we can see what this name is of this room, so it's called facility. If we jump over to this model, which is the interiors model, and it right now it does not have the facility loaded in, we click on the room, we can see this one's called lobby, and if we come down here, this one's called office one, this is Office 2. Um, and what we'll do real quick, because this will affect it when we get to that point, we'll switch the numbering around so that facility has um, one. And then, the, and then from there, it'll just count up uh, for these rooms. So you'll see later on when we fix the issue why I did that. So I'm going to save that model. And then in this model, I'm going to go back to manage links and just quickly reload that interiors model. And make sure that those room values have been up, updated. And if you've ran into this issue, there's a there's a number of ways that you can fix it. Um, and it all really depends on how you have things set up. But if we press OK, just want to make sure. Um, so the link should be updated. Um, I can't tell, but when we go in here and do the uh, space naming and stuff, uh, it should name everything correctly. Um, so we have our facility now. You know, In this instance, there's not very many. We could update that probably pretty quickly. But uh, if you have many rooms, uh, you, you mostly wouldn't want to do that. Um, also, if there's a lot of updates happening as well, you want to kind of make that as easy as possible without having to go back and change things um, around. So, And uh, if we come back to the links, we want to leave room bounding on in both, both instances because it, there is a room in that facilities model. It's just now it has other rooms within it. So we want it to know that, hey, this is the facility. This is, um, you know, the lobby, office one and two. So 
in this instance, we do need room bounding on, on both models. Um, so something that we can check uh, real quick to see what's causing the issue is if we go to visibility graphics. Uh, with your view open, you can go over to edit visibility graphics, click on that. We can jump over to the Revit links. We can expand that drop down and we can see what's going on. So um, I've uh, kind of moved models around while I was setting up this test. So that's why right now you're reading out as five and six. There was also some other links too I had to remove. But essentially what it's telling us is that this is the fifth model um, and then this is the sixth one. So if it was the other way around, if this was the, uh, if this interiors was the fifth, the facility was the sixth, we actually wouldn't have this issue. So one thing we could do is we could actually remove this facility model so we can, you know, if we exit out of this, go up to our manage tab, manage links, we can then we could jump into this Revit links and then we could unload um, uh, or actually entirely remove the facility model from ours. Um, and then reload it back in. Now, if you're setting up the model for the first time and you haven't progressed very far in the model and you don't have a whole bunch of hosted items in there, that may be a really great option for you. You could just simply do that. But say you're, you're, you're pretty, pretty far in and for whatever reason haven't set up the spaces correctly um, and unloading isn't an option or at least um, Removing the model entirely uh, isn't an option. So what we can do then is actually simply unload this. So if we unload this model, so we'll press OK. It'll tell us, that, hey, the spaces aren't properly enclosed. That's all right right now. We'll press OK. And then we'll just jump back to the massing, or not the massing in sight, but the Analyze tab. And then the Space Naming tab. Click on that and we'll say name and numbers, press OK. And we can see, all right, so our lobby, so our numbering's correct, like what we changed in the interiors model, so two, three, four. We can see it updated, so now we have lobby, office one, office two, and facility. We may need to update this uh, if we want to change it, but you can see for the most part, everything's updated. So the next thing uh, to do is just to go back and manage links. So if we jump back into the manage tab, manage links, uh, then in here what we can do is just reload the facilities model. And then press OK. We can see now all our spaces are updated correctly. Uh, we have Office 1, Office 2, and Facility. So that works totally fine. Um, that'll get the job done without you entirely removing the link and then bringing it back in. You know, removing the link would cause a lot of issues um, as well. So this is definitely probably the best option. But real quick, I'll show you uh, that if you do remove the link and you can load it back in, um, what will happen. So if we go back, we can see everything's back to where it was. If we go into Manage Links, and we totally remove this this link. So we'll say remove. We'll go back. We'll go into add. Um, while this waits, I'm going to pause it real quick. All right. So it's open. So what we're going to do is we're going to reload that facility model. So we'll go in there. We'll open. It's going to load the model, and now we can see it loaded. Let's press OK. And then let's go into our visibility graphics. So I'm going to, I'm going to click VB and just verify that that number is a higher number than the interiors model. So that means the interior, interiors model will take priority over the facility models when it, when it comes to spaces. The next thing I want to do, since the facility model does have a space in it, is I want to grab it, select entire project, manage, um, or actually not manage links. I want to add it, edit type, and then make sure that's room bounding. And then I want to click OK. 
So in the instance, uh, when we were looking at the model at the time, uh, the, ac the, ac the actual space um, in the facility model was, so they put you know a s one room in that entire space. Um, it was an existing model, so at any point, we could also go into that facility model and actually delete that space entirely, which would then allow us to simply uh, uh, load it in, we, you know, even if it was the first, you know, we would just reload the link. Um, we wouldn't remove the link. We would just reload it after we've deleted that space, run the space naming from the analyze tab, and then we're good to go. It, it'll name it correctly, even if uh, it takes the facilities as a priority. Um, in that example, we could remove that space because those spaces actually needed to belong, or those rooms needed to belong in the interiors model. So, if you have that as an option, just delete it from, you know, the uh, model that it's reading from, and then you should be fine after that. So that is another option, but we won't go down that route. Um, so as we saw in the visibility graphics, which I clicked VV, but you can also come over here. We saw that in the Revit links that facility was seven, which was a higher number than the interior. So interior should take priority. We'll go, we'll click out of that. Uh, we made sure facility was, so we, we selected, you know, the entire project, made sure, made sure it was, uh, space bounded. So, you know, our room bounding. And, uh, now what we'll do is we'll go back up to space naming, name and numbers checked, and then we'll press okay. We can see again, uh, we actually got the, the right name this time, but, um, if we look at, uh, lobby, so that's two, office was three, then office two was four, and then facility was one. Um, and it was pulling from the room number. So uh, there you go. That's kind of how you handle that issue. So if you ran into that and didn't know what was going on, it's a really easy fix. Um, so hopefully this video helped you out. Let me know if you have any questions at all. Uh, feel free to reach out um, either through a comment or uh, on LinkedIn, whatever the case, just um, feel free to do so. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.